Hey everybody, my name is Alex with Hake Hardware, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Profiler. Now this is a must-use tool if you want to make sure you are getting the right amount of nonces and the right amount of threads for your drive to make sure that you are able to finish in the Poet window when you're generating your proof. There is a little bit of risk reward going on here. You can get a faster drive speed, but you're risking the chance that you're not able to generate the proof on the first time through. So we'll go over a little bit of a few different scenarios and you're, you will have to make a decision on your own what is going to work for you. Because like I said, there's going to be a trade-off for speed uh, versus risk. So there's a few things to take into consideration, but let's jump right into the command line here. Prerequisite for this, you need to have Go Space Mesh installed. So if you don't have Go Space Mesh, watch one of my other videos. I have a few on how to get that installed. Come back to this one because you're going to want to use this tool. So this is actually available uh, as mentioned with Go Space Mesh. So if I just jump into my Go Space Mesh directory, do ls, I can see I have this profiler tool here. And we need to make it executable. So I'll do chmod plus x to make it executable, and then profiler. So now when I do ls, we can see it's green, just like go space mesh, so we can actually run the command. Now I think there is a dash help here. Yes, all right, perfect. So. What we can see is there's a few different options that we can include. We can do a data file, what you're going to want to do. You want to make sure that you're pointing the profiler at a post bin, uh, post data bin file on the drive that you're going to actually have the post data on. I believe you can do any file, but it's best and going to be most accurate if you're doing an actual uh, post data uh, bin file. So I recommend at least having one of those done before you do the profiler. You can do a data size, uh, you know, depending on the drive you have, you might want to do more than one uh, Gibby byte uh, just to get a more accurate sense of the speed. It's worth playing around. Um, so I, I typically have left it as the default, but it's worth, again, checking and seeing if there's any difference Maybe your drive, the speed drops if it's you know larger than uh, a, a Gibby byte there. So you can play around with that. Duration, I typically leave that alone. 10 seconds uh, is fine. You can make it run a little bit longer if you want to just make sure your drive is capable of keeping that speed up for a longer period of time. Okay, so what you're definitely gonna wanna specify is the threads and nonces. You're probably not going to want to do 1 in 16. That's pretty bad setup, and those are the defaults. So you're going to want to use the nonces and the threads that you actually think you're going to use. So the threads are basically like CPU threads, and you will want to know a little bit about your CPU, like how many cores you have, how many threads you have, things like that when you're choosing that. I know that I have uh, eight threads available for me to use. So I can typically uh, choose a value between one and eight. Uh, some CPUs have issues if you're maxing out the threads. So you may wanna experiment with a few different threads to see which one's gonna be the fastest. Uh, but typically you wanna run as many threads as you can. Now nonces is where the risk comes in because this is a number that goes anywhere from 16 to 288 and the lower your nonces, the faster it's gonna go. The speed of the drive will be faster, and I'll show you this in actual practice here shortly. Uh, but you have a chance where you may not generate the proof the first time through. So you may have to go and do uh, the proof generation a whole time again in order to successfully finish in the poet window. So if you have a very low number, your chances of actually generating a proof aren't great. So you can increase that number all the way up to 288. Uh, when you're getting into like the 200s, and it has to be a multiple of 16, um, when you're getting into the, into the 200s, like 256 and 288, you have a very high chance of generating a proof the first time through. Uh, so if you're, 
you're going to want to choose that option if you know you have plenty of time to finish. And if you're kind of risking it, you can do lower uh, nonces and you're going to finish, but you may not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're going to get through the proof generation. Now, if you actually generate a valid proof, that's uh, you know, going to depend on your luck. So for me, it's not worth it right now. I tend to err more on the higher nonces and slower speeds. So uh, getting out of the theory here, let's jump into what this actually means. And I have a one terabyte NVMe on this. And let's see, I want to do, let's start out by doing uh, dot profiler. We'll do dash T, which is my threads. We'll start with two threads. And my nonces are going to be, let's just say 128. And my dash dash data file is media post data. And I'm just going to do my zero dot bin. And we'll let it go. And let's see what we get. Now this will just run for 10 seconds, so I'm not going to speed the video up or anything. So we can see with, now this is an NVMe, so keep that in mind, with two threads at 128 nonces, I'm only getting 167 mebi bits per second or 0.167 uh, gibi bits. So that's pretty slow. On NVMe, you'd expect, you know, way, way higher than that, like, you know, a gigabyte, uh, gibibyte per second. But let's, uh, you know, let's pump up the thread. So let's see what increasing, you know, the CPU performance is going to do. So we'll run it again with four threads. And again, you know, like I said earlier, you, there's no real benefit of going more threads than your CPU has. So look that up. And also keep in mind, if you're maxing out the threads, if you're using your computer for something else, it may get really difficult. Okay, so we can see it's almost a 100% increase. So I've doubled the threads and I'm getting double the speed. So 0 0.16, now I'm getting 0 0.32. So let's go ahead and I know this is gonna be trivial, but um, let's just see if it's continuously, like am I going to now get um, 0.48 when I do six threads instead of that. And I basically do uh, 479 uh, maybe bits per second. Let's do the last one. So I have eight, eight cores here, or eight threads. Uh, let me run that with eight and let's see what we get. I have a feeling we will increase again by 160-ish uh, maybe bytes per second. Uh, that is, yep, that's about accurate. So it looks like it's a pretty linear increase when you're doing more and more threads. Now, let's see just for the fun of it. I'm going to put 10 here. I don't know uh, what's going to happen. I haven't actually tested this out before. I only have eight. Uh, now, this is running in, a, in Proxmox. It's a virtual machine, and I technically have like 48 uh, cores. Uh, so there you go. You can see when you when you over thread it, now we're losing performance. And I don't know the science behind that, but I can tell you, you don't want to go more threads than what you have available. So let's bring this back to eight. So we've, you know, this is just a VM. I'm okay with using all the CPU power assigned to it, but let's bump this up now. Um, so last time we ran this with eight threads, we got 624 um, megabytes per second. Now let's increase the nonces. So what we're doing is we're basically slowing things down because we're going to be doing more guesses to generate the proof. And I, the terminology might be wrong. I'm sure the developers are shaking their heads right now. But let's just say, you know, the number of nonces you have or the number of guesses as you go through to guess, you know, the right things. And if you have less guesses, you're going to be able to go faster. But if you, uh, but there's a good chance you're not going to guess correctly. Now, if you have a lot of guesses, you're going to go slower because you're making lots of guesses. But you have a higher chance of guessing the correct stuff. Uh, so let's just uh, start with 64. So let's, well, we're lowering the nonces. We should expect to see higher than 624. So let's give it a run. 
and let's see if this is also linear. Okay, so not quite double the speed, but we can see we're at over a gigabit per second, gigabit per second. Um, so that's a pretty big increase, you know, like um, nearly, nearly doubling the speed. So now we know what 128 is, we know what 64 is. Let's try 256. And there's a formula, I'll post it uh, in the description if you're a math guy or girl and you wanna do the math uh, on your percentages of guessing correctly based on the nonces you use. Okay, so we doubled it and we got actually about half the speed. So as we can see, at 256 nonces, there's a good chance one time through, I'm going to generate my proof. Now down at 64, there's a good chance I'm not going to generate that proof. So, but we're also going at three times the speed. So I don't think it's exactly like you could go through it three times uh, in this in the same amount of time as you would do I don't actually know how exact the profiler is as far as generating the proof because um, it's not actually like generating the proof so it's just kind of telling you the speed based on your nonces and threads so don't necessarily think that this is perfectly linear as far as you can go through it three times you can generate a proof three times if you're doing um, 64 nonces at eight threads versus 256 um, at eight threads. Because in that case, like I would probably choose 64 nonces and be okay with maybe I get lucky and I get it on the first try through, and now I've generated it in you know a third of the time as it would have taken if I would have done 256 nonces. Um, and then I still maybe it wouldn't have been a 100% chance that I get the proof the first time through, even with 256, it's like a 99% chance. But um, anyways, there is a little, like I said, there's a risk if you go low nonces that you're gonna have to go through it twice. So if with 64 nonces, you're still close to not completing the proof within the window, that's, you're in trouble because that means you're probably not going to, to get it. Now they did change some timelines where if you miss the window, you have all the way up until the next epoch starts, I believe, to actually submit your ATX. So you could you just miss one epoch you, and then you'd get the next one, but realize like you're missing a whole epoch. And, and I don't want to get I don't want to confuse things too much, but there are some changes where um, if you miss the window, you still have some time to submit your ATX and you'll get rewards, but it'll be the next, it won't be the next epoch coming up, it'll be the epoch after that. So it's kind of weird. Uh, I don't really like it, but apparently that's just how it's always supposed to function. So I'm not gonna uh, grovel over it too much. But getting back to the profiler, you can see why this tool is really useful. Um, to be honest, I've been going with eight threads and 144 nonces because uh, there's kind of like a curve and, and maybe I'll see if I can get some information on like, you know, as you increase for every 16 nonces you increase, what the percentage is that you're actually going to um, generate the proof successfully. I'll try and get that and maybe it's already out there. I'll post a link to it but it'd be good to know kind of like where you're at because I think it's like kind of like an exponential curve. Like the higher nonces you get, it gets up to 99% like really quick or in the 90% really quick. So me personally, I'm gonna do eight threads and I'm probably gonna do um, 144 nonces. So let, I mean, hang around if you want. I'm gonna see where I'm at for speed wise when I do that. Uh, eight threads, 144 for nonces. And again, remember it has to be 16 uh, multiples of 16. So if you're, it's like RAM, you know, 128 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of RAM, uh, things like that. Uh, so you just multiple of 16. And let's see, I'm gonna say 0.7. Oh my gosh, it already finished. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm sitting here staring at it. Uh, all right, 0.56. So not the best, not the worst. It's kind of in the middle. I'm very much kind of a risk averse person. Like I'm probably going to get it. The speeds are pretty good. Um, and it should be sufficient. This is only one terabyte. So I'm probably going to finish generating my proof in like 30 minutes. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but again, everybody's use case is separate or different. So I can't really say what you should do. It depends on how risky you want to be. But this video has been going out for a long time. The profiler is really cool. Mess around with it. It's very important that you make sure you have the speeds and uh, the risk set correctly for your use case. With that video, or <laughs> with that said, that's the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.